Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. And also, it's my great honor to be here with you guys. So as you all know, China just had this grand ceremony for the Communist Party of China's centenary. And I was working as a journalist at the ceremony the whole time. So today, I'd like to share some stories at the ceremony and the whole mood in China these days. You know, these days, a lot of Chinese people voluntarily went to send flowers to a road sign in the city of Hefei. The name of the road is Yanxiao Road, which was named after two young men, Chen Yannian and Chen Qiaonian. They were among the leaders of CPC 100 years ago, along with their father, Chen Duxiu, who is one of the founders of CPC. And both of the two young men were tortured and brutally murdered by Kuomintang in their 20s for fighting for the future of China. So to commemorate these two heroes, the road was named after them. And that's, and you know, what's really touching is that this road leads to another main road in the city called Road of Prosperity. Those two young men didn't survive to see today's China but they paved the way for us, generations of Chinese people after them to the road of prosperity. There were hundreds of thousands of people just like these two young men who was searching for the best way to develop this country and sacrifice their lives for their China dream 100 years ago. And now we look, at, we look back at this history. Their death, of course, was extraordinarily meaningful because they exchanged their lives for a better future for us, for China. But you know, back then, they didn't know what would happen after their death. They didn't know whether they would succeed, but still they were willing to make this sacrifice for this unknown future. So these heroes have never been forgotten by the people here. And since July the 1st, Chinese people, countless Chinese people across the nation went to commemorate these, those heroes uh, on this road sign, because we are not taking this life we have now for granted. And you know, during the ceremony, Chinese President Xi Jinping said, Chinese people will never allow any foreign force to bully, oppress, or subjugate us. Anyone who will attempt to do so will find themselves on a collision course with a grid wall of people forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people. But not only the literal translation of a Chinese idiom by some Western media is hilarious, many Western mainstream media depict it like another wolf warrior strategy by China. Yet I think they're turning a blind eye at this history of China, how it was invaded, occupied by many foreign invaders from Britain, France, Germany, Japan, Italy, how it lost so many lands, how it couldn't have a say about their own land. And this centuries long humiliation, like, you know, it took China over a hundred years to finally develop from a war torn aggressors occupied country to now the world's second largest economy, lifted over 850 million people out of poverty to help Chinese people to stand on their own feet. And of course, with this collective memory, Chinese people won't let it happen again, especially we are now seeing some governments, some people are trying to do it again in Hong Kong, in Taiwan, in Xinjiang, in Tibet. So a hundred years ago, you see those CPC pioneers told Chinese people, if we all unite and fight together, we will build a strong country that provides better life for everyone. And decades ago, when we were little, we always heard from the news, uh, from China's policies, from, from history textbooks, that the country's goal is to build a moderately prosperous society in all respects. Our goal is to reach collective prosperity. Back then, it sounded like a far-fetched dream or just a slogan. But actually now, decades later, when we look at our lives, we realize those goals are really becoming true. We successfully ended absolute poverty and built this moder moderately prosperous society. And the people that witnessed the biggest change of their life in the past few years are actually the impoverished people. So they were not empty slogans. It's becoming our true life now. And of course, those changes couldn't be made if there weren't millions of people devoting themselves to helping others. I also would like to share some stories of the people that I talked to at the ceremony. I think that in the West, there's a huge misunderstanding towards CPC because of years of demonization by the mainstream media and politicians. So I hope I can give others a picture of the people that make up the CPC. 
ABC. At the ceremony, many people who made great contributions in their respective areas were invited to attend. They come from all work backgrounds, all ethnic backgrounds. There were workers who made great inventions and received medals for outstanding contribution. There were doctors who went to the front line in Wuhan saving COVID-19 patients. There were Tibetans, Mongolians, different ethnic uh, group, people from different ethnic groups. They were outstanding members in their community. I made a vlog about this, by the way, showing the behind the scenes of the story. So if you're interested, you can check out my channel. But I want to tell the story of this couple who are from e-ethnic group. They have been working as teachers in the village called Cliff Village for 31 years. This cliff is called Cliff Village because it literally located on a steep cliff in the Daliangshan Mountain in Sichuan province. And that place has the most hostile geological conditions. Kids, villagers had to climb a ladder on this steep cliff for 40 minutes to go to school. And with that condition, you can imagine how hard it was for villagers to make a living. And that place was the last battlefield for poverty alleviation too. But this couple have been teaching kids from impoverished families there for over 31 years. So I asked them like, why? Why you choose to stay in such a place for so long? And they were like, you have to put yourself in other people's shoes. We'd be upset if we were the villagers and our kids couldn't go to school. Uh, the woman had tears in her eyes telling me about her life. She says, uh, I feel happy that those kids need me and I feel happy I can help change those kids' life, their future. And this couple are not the only one. There are millions of people who devoted themselves in helping those impoverished people. A teacher named Zhang Gui Mei received the July 1st medal because she built a free high school for girls in villages for 12 years. In, you see, in impoverished regions, some adults tend to prefer boys over girls. Some impoverished families would send all the boys in the family to go to school and leave the girls at home doing farm work or chores. But Zhang Gui Mei believes if the girl get education, she can change at least three generations of the family. So she donated all her salaries, bonuses, savings to provide free education for those girls from impoverished families. And she wouldn't spend all the money to, to cure her sickness, her diseases, even though the government provided him like uh, the, the medical care and the money to, to cure her disease. She still spent those money to those girls. And you know what? Nearly 2,000 of them went to colleges. So there were countless people just like them that selflessly devoted all they have to help others. You know who they are? They're just ordinary Chinese people. And they are all members of the CPC. And did they see the goal of their life is serving the people? Those are the stories I, as a person born and raised here, witnessed. China successfully fulfilled their goals in the past 100 years, and I really I have full confidence in the next 100 years. And that's all my speech. Thank you.